Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my car. I know I'm currently sitting in the back of my car. A little weird. <laughs> but today's adulting episode is going to be all about kind of basically just the basics of owning a car. So if you do own a car, what you want to know about keeping up with it, basic maintenance things, uh, what you should keep in the car, all of that. A lot of these tips I've learned from my dad, so shout out to you dad, thanks. And now I'm going to teach them to you. So first thing that I kind of want to go over is basic things that you should keep in your car at all times. So right here next to me, in the back of my car, I have this milk crate full of stuff. So I'm gonna show you what I keep in here. Now first, not in the milk crate, I actually have an air filter here, as well as some wiper blades here, just some extra ones for when I need to replace them. And these just like didn't really fit in here, so I just keep them back there for when I need them. It's good to keep spares of things like wiper blades. Now in here, the first thing I have is an old dirty rag, because this will come in handy. This one is like an extra absorbent one. I think it's like for babies or something when they, you know, throw up or whatever. But it's also very handy in the car. I use this when I need to clean something or when I need to check my oil and things like that. I keep some gloves handy if you don't want to get your hands all dirty when you're doing car work. I have a washcloth and I actually usually keep one of these up at the front as well. Um, I used it a lot in the past couple days on my road trip because I had to keep wiping the windshield to get the frost off. So it's handy for things like that. Either a washcloth or a rag or just keep multiple rag type things with you. I have a bunch of oil filters, way more than I am like ever gonna need. I have four at the moment. It's gonna take me a while to change my oil four times, but we'll see. I just have those because we had a bunch, so I kept them here because I don't know where else to keep them. I also keep a headlamp, so that in case you ever get stranded somewhere and it's dark and, you know, something happens, you've got light. I keep a little bit of extra oil just in case I ever need it. I also keep an emergency blanket in here, as well as this actual blanket. Uh, just in case I do get stranded somewhere. It's also good to keep a sleeping bag in here, but I currently don't have my sleeping bag in here. I probably should, but I do always keep a blanket because you never know if you're gonna get stranded, it's gonna be cold, whatever. And then both of these back here are tool sets. I have this bag with a bunch of screwdrivers in it and a bunch of wrenches of all different sizes. You will want to check uh, with your actual car and see what kind of wrenches it uses before you buy a whole bunch. It might use metric or US. This one, I've got a tool set of these socket wrenches and I, it has inches and metric in it. So this comes in handy a lot too when I do my own car work. My car mainly uses these ones, like the 10 and the 13 a lot. But this is a pretty standard set, I would say, and would work on pretty much any vehicle. And then lastly, I have one of these kits from AAA. I would definitely recommend getting one of these if you are a new car owner, or if you just have a car and don't have one. In here I have jumper cables, which I have used multiple times. Please, please, please keep jumper cables in your car. I have a flashlight, some duct tape, um, a little triangle thing to put out if I'm on the side of the road and it's, it's reflective and it'll let people know I'm there. And then a bunch of stuff in here that I have yet to use, which is a good thing. You may never really need these things, but if you do need it, you're gonna be really glad you had it. There's things like a poncho and um, little first aid kits and like some cleanup wipe things and bungee, some grippy gloves, just a lot of potentially very useful stuff in here. I would also recommend keeping a tow strap in your car and also knowing how to use things like jumper cables and a tow strap. I also want to show you guys what I keep under here in the car. I have extra little tools, like a little light in case one of my lights goes out, more lights here, a sock again for checking oil, a belt, and a crowbar, is that what you call these? in case you need to get your wheel off. And speaking of wheels, under here I have my spare tire. So that's just an extra little handy compartment to keep stuff. So that's everything in the back of my car. Now I also wanna show you guys what I keep up here. So first of all, in the door, I've got an ice scraper and maps. I know no one uses maps anymore, but you know, what if your phone is dead or something? I also always keep an ice scraper. Wow, I just realized this is broken but I keep an ice scraper thing because I live in Colorado. And then in the glove box, I keep quite a few things. <laughs> the first thing you'll see is Ritz crackers, the most important. 
not really. <laughs> you know, what if I get hungry? This is just a non-perishable thing that's cheap and easy to keep in the car in case something happens. I also do actually keep gloves in my glove box for when my fingers get cold and I have to drive and touch the steering wheel. I keep napkins. I have a road log, which I highly, highly, highly recommend. Gotta keep a road log and keep track of when you do all of your maintenance. Because then you will know when the last time you changed your oil was, when you last rotated your tires, etc. And these books are nice because they're weather resistant, so you can write in them in any weather. And when I record something in here, I put down the mileage, the date, what I did. And so this happened to be an oil filter in change that I did August 3rd. And then the next one is due in 7,500 miles because that's what my manual says. So I know to change my oil again at this mileage. There are also apps and stuff to help you keep track of all of your car maintenance if you want to do that. I have this one called Simply Auto where you can log your entries here. It can tell you different stats. I don't really use it that much. But you can use it to keep track of things as well as have it remind you when you have to, you know, do your next oil change or change your battery spark plugs, timing belt, etc. Next, always keep your manual in here. That's very important. It's going to tell you pretty much anything you need to know. Always have your current registration and insurance information in here. Easy to access. If you get pulled over, you're going to need it. Other random things I keep in here are like other manuals down here. Reusable straws because, you know, what if I want them? Wet ones, a pen, some reusable silverware. I like to keep uh, some little sticky notes and a notepad in case I have to write things down. And I have these little wipes um, basically just to clean up the dashboard. Also always keep a tire pressure gauge in your glove box so that you can check your tire pressure. So speaking of checking the tire pressure and all of that, uh, let's talk a little bit about things that you should do before you even start to drive the vehicle. And that would be to make sure that all of your tires are up to the right pressure and make sure that all of your lights work. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the car and turn on my lights. And I'll just let it sit here and I'll go and walk around. You can make sure that your lights work. Looks good. Looks good. You can check the back ones. It's a little bit harder to see, but those are on. It'd be good to check reverse lights too, which is easier to do if you actually like have someone and have them put it in reverse. You also want to make sure that all the lights um, right above your license plate work because if they don't, you will get pulled over and you could get fined a lot of money, as my dad found out. <laughs> so then, to check your tire pressure, you want to first see what number it should be at. So that's always going to be in the front door jam here of your car. At least it probably should be. So mine is right here. And I can see that it says the front should be at 30 PSI and the rear should be at 29. So then, to check that, you just go to your tire, you undo this cap, you take your tire pressure gauge, put it on, see what it says, 29. So 29 is actually a little bit low uh, because my door jam said it should be 30. So I will actually be going around and checking all of the rest of them and seeing if they're good. And then I'll probably need to fill them up a little bit. And you can do that at pretty much any gas station. Uh, they should have air over to the side and you probably have to put in quarters. And then once you do that, you have a time limit and you go around and you fill up all of your tires. So I would recommend if you are doing that to take off all the caps and be ready, put in your quarters and then go and fill them all up and have your tire gauge with you so you can check if they're right. So next I want to show you guys a few things um, in the hood, in the engine. So first to pop the hood, you have some kind of lever thing somewhere in your car. Mine is right down here and basically it will have some kind of logo like that. You just pull it and it pops the hood. So then to get the hood open, you see there's a little space here. You kind of have to get your fingers under there. You feel for a lever. Um, you push it aside and you're able to open it up. I would also recommend that if you are working with your engine, especially if it's on, do not have your hair down like me. Put it up in a ponytail or whatever. Or if you have short hair, then you're good. All right, so you always wanna check your fluid levels, like your coolant, which is a little bit harder to see. But mine down here, it has low level and high level. And you can see the level there is actually pretty low, which you should not have to fill up your coolant that much. I think mine might have a leak. Because I've noticed that I have to fill up my coolant a lot more than a person should. So I'm going to look into that because it's pretty low right now and it really shouldn't be because I didn't fill it up that long ago. So uh, just make sure to watch those kinds of things. 
Also look at your windshield wiper fluid. This is mine. It's pretty full right now. I might top it off before I leave again. And to do that, you basically just open this up and pour it in. And that's something else that you can keep in the back of your car if you want. You can keep windshield washer fluid, coolant, oil, etc. And now I want to show you guys real quick how to check your oil. So I'm going to go to the back and get that rag that I showed you guys earlier. So you want to check your oil fairly regularly, especially after a long trip. So to do that, all you need is this called a dipstick. So what you're going to do is bring it out, clean it off on something. I need two hands to do this, so hold on. So I cleaned it off there, just like that. You can also then use that to check how dirty your oil is or not. Then you stick it back in and be sure to stick it all the way down and then bring it back out. And then you're able to check the oil level so I don't know if you guys can see on here, but there's an L there for low and an F there for full. And basically you just don't want it at low, and mine is actually well above full. It's like up the level is about right here. So I am good to go. There, hopefully you guys can see that a little bit better in the sun now. So basically that just tells you the status of your oil. If it's really low or something, that could mean you have a leak or you need to replace it soon. A few kind of last minute things that I also want to mention to you guys are um, to always use your parking brake or your emergency brake or whatever. It's usually something that looks like this that is down. See, then my car moved when I did that. And you pull it up and now your car is not going to move for safety reasons and it's just better for your car. Also, turn off all things like your radio, your heat or AC or fan or whatever. Turn all of that off before you actually turn your car off. That way, when you turn your car on the next time, it's not also trying to start the heat and AC and radio and all of that. And yeah, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Um, just be safe, you guys. Car ownership is actually a very big responsibility. So it's good to know what you're doing and also just get to know your car and how it runs and how you can keep yourself safe and others safe. Driving is really fun, but you have to know the responsibilities of owning a car, because otherwise you can get in a lot of trouble. You, If you don't change your oil, then your engine's not going to work and you can completely bust your car. Read your manual, know what kind of gas to put in your car, know what tire pressure should be at, know what kind of tools and wrenches and things to have, know how often you need to change your oil, how often you need to rotate your tires, change the wipers, all of that. And a lot of those um, like simple things like changing your wiper blades or whatever are pretty simple things that you can do at your house. I know I've done all that. I've rotated my tires. I've changed the wiper blades. I've changed the oil a couple of times. It's not too difficult and you can save a lot of money that way. But there are also a lot of things that you should leave up to a mechanic and have them do because um, if you are not a mechanic yourself and maybe don't know that much about cars, then you could up end up doing something terribly wrong. So like if your timing belt needs to be replaced or something like that, go to a mechanic. <laughs> And yeah, it is a lot of money, um, but you want your car to run. Cars are kind of expensive. They're very expensive. <laughs> That's just what it costs to have a car. Maybe try to find a good mechanic in your area um, that you might take your car to regularly and they can do maintenance for you. And it's someone that you know and trust. And don't cheap out on things like cheap oil because this is your car and you probably spend a lot of time in it. And um, if things go wrong, then it could really be a life or death decision. Also, please, please, please never text and drive. Don't talk and drive. Don't be a distracted driver. That can also have very severe consequences. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from it. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Be safe, subscribe if you want to stick around, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.